Jake Mace, the vegan athlete here at the yard in Gilbert, which is close to Phoenix, Arizona, with Robert, Will, and Vanessa. These guys are all vegan athletes, trainers, bodybuilders, powerlifters. We're gonna go through three exercises with each person of what they think is really important for physical fitness to do consistently. You wanna go first, Will? All right, let's do it. All right, let's go. Will, what do we got first? All right, so what I like to do first is just a uh, standing overhead press. Some people call it military press if you're sitting. I just like to do them standing. Uh, a couple things you want to incorporate in there. Make sure your abdominal muscles are very tight. Keep your lower back relaxed. What I like to do is stagger the stance so they take pressure off the lower back. A lot of people are trying to stand up and they're using more back with this exercise. Why do it standing instead of sitting? You know, I, I think it engages a lot more muscle, especially core activity and everything, because you know, you're standing, holding the weight. Take it back, like I said, I like to stagger the stance, keep the abs tight, relax the lower back, just press straight up. I like to get straight form with these. You'll see people in there bouncing and bending their knees and pushing up. I like to keep it smooth, strict form, as I said, with that staggered stance. Just press straight up. And down, keeping the abs really tight. What would you say to people about the straight bar versus dumbbells? You know, I prefer the straight bar when doing this exercise. If I'm seated, I will use dumbbells on occasion, but uh, I think I get a better workout using the straight bar and it really brings my shoulders up. And how many reps and how many sets you think? I usually go about three to four reps and I do, um, I'm sorry, three to four sets and uh, anywhere between eight to 10 reps typically. All right, cool man, let's go. What's the next one? All right. We're gonna move down the way here. The old exercises are the best ones, don't you think? Oh yeah, man. Nothing like those. I mean, you see so many gimmicks and gadgets and quick fixes out here. Yeah. Maybe broken hearted and broken the pockets. So, uh, <laughs> Maybe broken the back. Exactly, that too. I like to keep the elbows tucked in really tight and just really isolate the bicep, slow and control. Flex it all the way up to the top. Down, give it a good squeeze at the top. Slowly lower it back down, get the negative resistance too. Once again, a lot of people go too heavy and they like to rock back and forth. And uh, too high of a risk for injury for me. I don't want to throw my back out. I'm already old, so it ain't happening. <laughs> and the weight, you go down slow to get that negative. Absolutely. Take that nice, slow, controlled pace. Can I do something? Relax. Go for Let's it. Let's see what's working underneath here. Go oh for my it. God. It hurt my fingers. And then slow and controlled on the way down. So you get the negative, the uh, eccentric and concentric for those, um, Trainer people out there watching. How long have you been vegan for, Will? Five and a half years. Just about six, actually. A little over five and a half. Same thing with this, three to four sets, maybe eight to ten reps? Yep, same deal. These three exercises, how many days a week are you hitting it? Uh, usually three to four. Right now, I'm just kind of in the maintenance phase. I'm not training for a competition or anything. What are you thinking for rest? How much rest should you take between training sessions? You know, as far as Daily, you mean between training from one day to the Let's day. say you did these these three exercises on Monday. Mm -hmm. When would you hit them again? Oh, probably Wednesday or so. Okay. You take a day or so in between. If I'm in the gym the day in between, it'll be different, totally different body parts. I'm working cool. So I usually go to underhand grip, I'll shoulder width apart. I like to stand up at the weight first. Make sure I retract the shoulder blade, keep the abs tight. Then at the waist, keep a nice flat back. Bring the bar up to the abdominals, keep the elbows close. Nice wide back this way. What are you working with this one? Relax, back muscles. And of course you get biceps and other supporting muscles, but mainly relax. Looking good, I can see them working. Stand it up, walking forward. Once again, the same thing. You see a lot of people, them proper form, it seems like they're going to injure their back because that's all they're really working on. They'll kind of jerk up and in for the weight. I like to keep the form really strict, keep the abs tight, focus on the lats. Would you say these three are three of your staple exercises when you're hitting your routine? Oh, absolutely, man. Um, these are my big three, really building muscle. Um, I usually go heavier on the weight, and that's when I fluctuate the reps. I'm gonna bring the rep count down, but I increase the weight, so I play with it a little. And where can folks find out more about you? Oh, at Will Tucker Fitness on Instagram and Facebook. Thanks, man. Vanessa, what are you doing with these blue things here? All right, I am doing a plyometric push-up. I'm gonna show you the modified version first. You wanna keep it a little bit wider than shoulder width apart because you wanna be able to do a push-up in between. Modified, you're gonna walk with your hands to do a push-up, walk back up, do another push-up, and so on. Now, if that's too easy for you, then you're gonna land in a push-up, 
and then come up high and push up. Nice. Working on that explosive movement. Build up power and speed. One of my favorite chest finishers. Do you focus on that like tenacious lifting and then also explosive plyometric style lifting? I do, yeah, that explosive, like I said, build, builds power and strength. Just like a sprinter. Look, think of a sprinter's body compared to a cross country person's body. That's totally different, right? I want to build muscle, build power, build speed. How long have you been vegan for? I've been vegan about 16 years. That's awesome. Yeah. All right, what's the second exercise you got for All us? All right, the further I am underneath, the harder it is. If I walk myself up, gonna make the exercise a little bit easier. So I wanna make this as difficult as I can. I'm gonna go overhand grip and pull myself up. Nice and control. Really squeeze my shoulder blades at the top. Full range of motion is important. And this is great because you can do all different types of grips. Got neutral grip here. Again, nice and control. Full extension. Now I got underhand. Now, to make this exercise even more difficult, put your feet on a bench, stick a plate, 25 pound plate, 45 pound plate on your chest. Cool. Same exercise, feet up on a bench and a plate on your stomach or chest. Yep. What do you got for us third? All right. What's the squat working? Why do you love the squat so much? I think some multi-joint movement works everything. Actually, a squat is one of the best ab exercises you can do. People think land on the ground. Really? Doing crunches, just squat. Make sure it's resting high on your shoulders. Wrap it nice and safely. Try to minimize your walk out. I like a little bit wider than shoulder width apart. I like to turn my toes out a little bit. Protect that lower back. First thing, hips back, okay? Deep as you can. I like to try to go past parallel. All the way up. And I see people do this at the gym all the time. They bend their knees first. Always want to think, hips back, butt back, really stick out your butt, sit as deep as you can, my chest is facing forward, my back isn't rounding, shoulder blades back. So you're working legs, butt, lower back, but also abs and core. Abs, everything. More bang for your buck, doing the squats. Compound lift, multi-joint lift, great overall exercise for everything. Even doing body weight. It's difficult. But again, great exercise for everything. In your opinion, these three exercises, how many reps you doing, how many sets you doing? You know, it's different. For squat, if I'm going really heavy, I go anywhere between one to, to five reps. Um, if I'm going lighter, I do 25 to 50 reps. So if you're doing one to five reps, how many sets of that? Oh, sometimes 12 to, 12 to 15. Really? I'm, I sometimes I stay here half an hour. Wow. And keep going. Go on that one exercise. One exercise, yeah. That's great. Let's say you were to hit one of these or all three of these really hard on Monday. When would you do them again? Um, I wait about five to six days to do the next. Because I, my, my whole thing is I blast the, the, the muscle hit chest for like an hour, hour and a half, and then let it rest. You know, it's five, six days, and then hit it again. I want to tear down that muscle, break it down, let it heal, hit it again. And when you're healing it up, what are some of your favorite foods to uh, eat and consume to rebuild? You know, big uh, vegetable person. A ton of veggies, do a lot of sweet potatoes, a ton of tofu, a lot of quinoa. Very simple, clean foods. Um, I do a lot of grains, spirulina, and chlorella. I do BCAAs, um, eating six to nine times a day, trying to refuel because I'm working out two to three hours a day. That's awesome. So, awesome, man. Thanks for the tips, looking yeah. good. You can reach me on Instagram at Plant Based Muscle or my website is plantbasedmuscles.com with an S. Awesome. Robert, you got some massive dumbbells right there. What are you going to do with these? Yeah, thanks, bro. Um, going to lift them, you know? Uh, we do some shoulder raises. <laughs> giant let's, set. Let's see it. Uh, giant set of shoulders. I use this as a warm up typically, and so, which is why the dumbbells are the level they are. They're lighter. Right, because I'm gonna do about 12 repetitions per movement, four movements consecutively without a break, so it's 48 repetitions, and it's gonna look like this. I do lateral raises. This is, is really, is great to warm up 
the entire shoulder girdle. So I'll do about 12 here. Try not to bounce around this way too much. And then I switch after, let's say, 12 or so and go to front raises. So I just hit the lateral deltoid with the lateral raises, of course. Now I'm hitting the front deltoid or anterior deltoid with the front raises. Again, using light enough weight that I'm not moving around, not swaying very much. Just like we try to avoid that during bicep curls or other movements where we often find ourselves bouncing around and moving. And then I'm gonna bend over and do rear delt flies. So just lean forward, almost as if I'm sitting on a bench, and get up nice and wide as high as I can to the rear deltoid. And I'll do about a dozen of those. Then I come right back up and do an overhead press when I'm already fairly fatigued somewhere around 36 repetitions or so in a normal giant set. So even these 10 pound dumbbells, it looks kind of silly when you see yourself fatiguing at the end. Or maybe they're 12, maybe they're 15, maybe they're 20 pound dumbbells. Just hope that, you know, a girl or a guy you're trying to impress doesn't come in at the last rep. <laughs> hey, that's the best time. Hey, can I get a spot? Right here. <laughs> so basically you're saying is put your ego aside, do the light weight, hit a ton of reps, yeah. good form to warm yourself up properly. Exactly, that's the point. And this, but this can also be a working set. Giant set can be a working set, but right. it'll be a little bit heavier. And so it might look something like, do a little more powerful reps, you know, where maybe form slides a tiny bit, but in the favor of, lot of, of heavier weights. Obviously you don't want to break form, but if you need to do a little bit of a push there, using the legs a little bit to get those up with, when it's a heavier weight, then that's something that uh, many people find themselves doing. So yeah, the whole idea here is to warm up every aspect of the shoulder and then continue on with your shoulder workout. And how long have you been vegan for, Robert? Uh, just about 22 years. Oh my God, you win <laughs> tonight. <laughs> Not a contest. Uh, <laughs> how old were you when you first went vegan? Animals win, right? That's true. Uh, I was 15 years old, uh, December 8th, 1995. Wow. 15 years old, weighing 120 pounds. Decided to give it a, give it a go for a week. Uh, get into animal rights in my high school and agriculture community of Corvallis, Oregon. Didn't know exactly how long it would, it would stick. And I enter, you know, the start of my 23rd year on December 8th. So 22 full years. More than half your life now. Yeah, 37 now, so. That's awesome. What's your second exercise for us? Okay. All right, so you got the okay. chain for extra weight. You got the dumbbells. And yeah. what are you going to be working on? Accessorizing, Jake. So here, what I'm doing here is I'm doing some weighted lunges. And so my objective here is to not let momentum and gravity pull me forward, right? So I don't want to just be hopping around like this, right? We see this all the time in the gym, just hopping around to get, just get them done. It's a hard exercise. How should we do we it? We don't want to do that. For one, that, that can really damage our knees when our knee goes past our toe. And number two, it's just not very effective. We're not actually getting muscle contraction and stimulation. So what we want to do is to step and sit where your knee almost touches. It doesn't quite touch under tension the whole time and see my knee doesn't go past my toe. My body is upright, my torso is up. I don't quite touch, I'm in a constant contraction and I'm balancing too. And of course you can go quite heavy. I've done, I don't know, 80 pound dumbbells in each hand or 75s walking across the gym floor. And back. How many reps of this? I usually go until I uh, fall over. And that's not gonna happen with these, with this kind of weight. But what I will do often is 50 pounds or more in each hand. And that's kind of my, that would give me about 12 reps on each side. Maybe you'll go for time too, like five minutes consistently or something. Five minutes is a long time. <laughs> yeah. For weighted lunges. Sure. It's more like 45 seconds to a minute. But I will get to a point with heavier weights when I get here and I just can't, you know, get a lot of stabilization there and leg muscles and core, abdominals, and I just can't get myself back up. And that's time. Speaking of bench press, is your third exercise something to do with the bench press? Sure is. How could you tell? All right, so we're doing bench press, but a modified version. What do you got? Yeah, what we're going to focus on here is that narrow grip bench press, triceps. So you're putting your hands closer together. Yeah. What is that working compared to a traditional distance of hands yeah, apart? Yeah, so a traditional bench press is going to work the chest and uh, the shoulders. So using a barbell, it's going to hit the chest and shoulders and triceps, but by putting your hands close together, you can take some of the chest out of it hmm. and get this nice long reach, and that's gonna engage the triceps. You get here, maybe where your thumbs are, are touching, and then I go a little bit, just a little bit wider, because if I'm, if I'm too close, if my 
hands are touching here, I, I, I just won't be able to balance it very well. It will probably fall over. So here's a nice way to, to tell, touch your thumbs together, maybe take it about two inches apart. And on this bar, as you can see the perforation uh, or, or where the grip starts, um, that's a good place to put the outside of your hand. So I'm actually on the really slippery part the whole time, but as long as I have it uh, in a controlled motion, it should be just fine. When you're doing your own workout, how many reps are you looking for? Uh, I usually aim for about 12, but in this case, I'm gonna go down and back up. Down and back up. And see, I noticed I was sliding there, so I'm gonna go a little bit, little bit wider. It's still narrow grip, but uh, a lot of sweat going on here. Down, back up. Down, uh, back up. No meat, uh, no problem, Robert. No meat, no problem. No meat, no problem. So Robert, where can folks find out more about you? Yeah, uh, uh, G-O-O-G-L-E. <laughs> uh, what do they search on it's Google? It's called Google, and you type in my name. Robert Cheek. Robert Cheek with an E on the end. And your Instagram was Vegan Bodybuilding and Fitness. Yeah, we went for the longest name allowed on Instagram. That's okay. Um, <laughs> and what's your most recent book? Most recent book is Plant-Based Muscle, which I co-authored with Vanessa Espinoza. It's been two years in the making, hundreds of pages long. Uh, it, it's finally just about to come out. It'll come out sometime in August 2017. Super excited about it. Got great people who endorse the book. Doctors, athletes, authors, uh, colleagues. And the premise of the book is a absolute behind the scenes look at exactly how Vanessa and I train. Our mindset, our philosophies, and, and our actual workout programs and exercises, as well as our meal plans, our thought process behind our nutritional approach the actual recipes we consume, grocery shopping tips, motivation, inspiration, and putting it all together to help people construct the health and fitness outcomes that they're seeking. So uh, that's uh, you know, plant-based muscle. Uh, you'll hear about it on Instagram, online, on the Google, and we'll have it available on veganbodybuilding.com. Cool. I'm sweating bullets here at the yard. I'll show you guys my three. Very simple, very classic, but I think the classic exercises are some of the most important. So push-ups. Doesn't need to have any gym for it, you can do it in the house. And you can just do 10. But I'm finding nowadays that most people can't even do 10 push-ups because they're getting so good at computers. So 10 push-ups, that's where you start. Then I want you guys to work on negative push-ups. So if you can go down like real slow, work that negative rep. Hold it at one inch for a few. Blow it up, do it again. Can you do 20 of those? Then I want you guys to try jumping. So like plyometric style from push-up to tight to push up, to tight, and just vary it. Go on YouTube and search for different kinds of push ups and add them to your routine. And do them until you burn out. And then when you're burned out, hold that one inch for as long as you can. I like push ups because they work the core and the abs too. 16 years vegan. All right, next classic pulling exercise, the pull up. I love it when it's short like this, because for those of you who can't do 20, 30, 40, 50 reps of pull-ups, going to do one or none, a short pull-up bar is great. Because I want you guys to focus on the negatives. So jump into it, and then go down as slow as you can. Dangle for a second, jump back into it, down as slow as you can. And just go until burnout happens. We'll just do two more for the video. Once you're dead, the last one, try to hold as long as you can the up position. I saw Jesse Graff do this for like almost two minutes. And how long can you stay away from straight arms? Come on! And we do one so you guys can see. Hold that. So for the pull-ups, work the negative. Third, I love the cables because it gives you like constant resistance all the way through the exercise. So get yourself a cable machine, get one arm flat position like this. And I love this exercise for a little bit of deltoids and arms, but mostly for your core and lower back and learning how to be athletic from this like athletic kind of natural position that you would use in tennis or racquetball or baseball or martial arts or anything. So I got right hand on the Handle, left hand to support, getting that width in the arms, straight arms, and good 
solid bent knee position. Once you feel stable, get that nice good width going on it and back. One of my favorite core exercises when my friends come with me to the gym. They do this with me. They text me for five days later, tell me that they're sore. Eight. And the last one, I always hold it for a few seconds and come back slow. And of course, do both sides. It's tough, but it's one of my favorites. Robert, one question in conclusion. Why is it important, you think, to eat plant-based foods instead of meat-based foods for fitness and athleticism? To enhance uh, energy, speed up recovery, reduce inflammation, and to eat for efficiency. How about the protein from plants versus the protein from meat? Yeah, uh, super efficient. I mean, we, we only need a small amount, five to 10% of our total calories coming from protein. Uh, plants provide that. And excess isn't necessarily better. That's, it's tougher on, oftentimes, digestion, on uh, liver and kidneys. And so plant-based foods are efficient. They're low in calories, but high in nutrients. I call it a high net gain nutrient density. Why do you think plant-based foods versus meat-based foods for fitness and athleticism? Uh, two things. You're, you're missing the cholesterol and the saturated fat. Plant-based foods, um, high nutrient-dense foods, so much better for your body. The protein is more absorbable. Uh, just better for your overall, overall body. So Will, plant-based foods versus meat-based foods for fitness and athleticism, what do you think? Uh, the things that the two of them mentioned, definitely the cholesterol, uh, you're not getting um, devastating effects. It's a, when you actually heat up meat or cook it, grill it especially, it uh, turns almost carcinogenic. So it uh, is a precursor to cancer, other things associated with animal-based proteins. Uh, and I'm a high fruit guy and fruit is full of amino acids and those are building blocks of protein. So plant proteins. Robert, your favorite vegan book? Yeah, um, Diet for New America was the first one for me back in the 90s. Is that John Robbins? John Robbins, Diet for New America was the first one that I, that I read. And that's, you know, that's old school. So, uh, you know, I, I think that's inspired probably millions of people. Will, a movie or a book that was impactful to you to go vegan? Ooh. Bam, you just talked to the man that authored it, uh, Vegan Bodybuilding Fitness. I was uh, competing in bodybuilding back in the day and I went vegetarian, wanted to take the next step to veganism, thought I was, was alone in the movement. This was back when Borders Bookstore was still around. I found a book yeah. by that gentleman right over there to my left, Robert G, that uh, get solidified that I could do it. Um, Plenty of, he's written a second book called Shredded, the follow-up to that. Uh, he has a book coming out with Vanessa here, Plant-Based Muscles, that's coming out soon. And for people that are looking for an inspirational story about weight loss, the man right there authored the book to it, The Change by Mylon Ross. All good books on doing plant-based uh, and health-related. Vanessa, books or movies that were inspiring to you to go vegan? You know what, Robert Cheek, simple as that. There's veganbodybuilding.com. Uh, is the reason why I stayed vegan and confirmed that I was doing everything correctly and if it wasn't for that guy right there None of us would be here today. I mean he has God he's the godfather God. of the movement and uh, thanks to him I'm here today now you're co-authoring a book with him. Yeah, I'm very very lucky to be Co-authoring a book with him and uh, he's been and still is my biggest inspiration and it's coming out this month called what? Plant-based muscle a couple weeks stay tuned I went vegan before, almost before Google, definitely before Facebook and YouTube, and so it was books for me. There wasn't a lot of vegan movies yet, so Mad Cowboy for me by Howard Lyman was one of the best books because it was short and sweet and very impactful to me as a 19-year-old just coming back from China. I went vegan like that, tried it for a month, and just kept doing it, and now 16 years later. I know, right? Yo, where there's a will power, there's a way. <laughs> hey, Will, how long you been? Uh, how long you been vegan for? Man, I've been vegan uh, five and a half years now, almost six years. How, how tall are you? How tall am I? Short. <laughs> how much do you weigh? Let's see. Do I need to stand on the step? I'm like uh, five seven. Uh, probably about a buck forty on a buck forty five. We'll go check after this. Okay. okay. How much weight is on there? Uh, this That's two plates in a little bit. That's two seventy five. Yeah. 275, you know, walking the park. <laughs> Let's see it. Let's see it. All right. All right. 
Let's see if I crack in the rear. Don't go too far. Okay, come right here. All right. You want help on three? I know. Okay. If I can't lift it, I don't mess with it. Okay. Simple rules, see? I'll see if I can get you one, dude. Come on. Come on! Come on! Oh. Damn, Will. Money. That's money. Hell, I'm believing. 275. Come on, pause it. Come on. 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 Pound. Let's see what we got on that, Jake. 146. That's the shoes. How could That's you weigh? Pounds. How could you be doing that much more than what you weigh? It's crazy. Pound for pound, man. Plants. Damn. Tell them to get that animal products out of their life. They can do it. I'm like 138. You can do it. 